from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. on Praise the Lord from the vacation capital of the world, exciting Central Florida, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teachings and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. Welcome to TBN. Welcome to Praise the Lord. I'm your host for today, LeJean Cole, and I am so excited that you decided to join us. I believe that this is going to be a show that's going to revolutionize your life. It's going to impact you and really be a blessing to you. Listen, in a few moments, we're going to have some phenomenal worship. But before we go there, I really just want to pray, and I want to pray for you that this really impacts you like never before. Father, I pray for those who are watching. I pray that like now, like never before, that their faith, God, is strengthened, God, and that their covenant with you is strengthened to the point, God, that there is nothing that can come against it. And so, Father, we just bless them and we praise you for them now. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you worship with us for just a few moments? resurrected Christ, the powerful Christ, and through his resurrection, he completed a plan of salvation, and he obtained a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father, and right now he sits at his right hand side, where we all have an interest. 
intercessor. And we are free in the power of his Holy Spirit. Welcome back. That worship was phenomenal. Love the worship of God. Nothing else can satisfy us like the worship of God. Again, I'm your host for this Praise the Lord episode, Lejean M. Cole Sr. I am so excited. I'm telling you, I'm bubbling over with excitement to have my good friend, Pastor Chris Walker, who is the senior pastor, along with his wife, Carla, of the Cathedral of Power Church in Claremont, Florida. Now, when you, when you even just hear in that name, the Cathedral of Power, I really love that. Will you tell us, Chris, some of the things that you guys are doing there at the Cathedral of Power, uh, and just you know, I would even I love to know the origin of names. Where did where did the name originate? The Cathedral of Power. Well, the, the name came from uh, Exodus nine and sixteen, and it says, "For this cause have I raised you up to show in you my power, mm. that my name may be declared throughout all the earth." And so when I saw that scripture, I knew, and I began to search. You know, because a cathedral means a large place, mm. but it all power means a place of authority. And I just believe that in this season, God really wants us to raise up a people of power and authority um, for these uh, these times that we're living in. And so that's where the name came from. We birthed a church in uh, Claremont, Florida, and uh, we've been there for 13 years. Um, uh, and so God's been doing some awesome things. He sent some awesome people. We always say that um, these are amazing people serving an amazing God, doing amazing things. Mm. And so he's been doing just that in these 13 years. And we're uh, just beginning to start a brand new ministry uh, that we're currently working on and launching in, uh, uh, in a few months, uh, which is called Stepping Stones. It's a transitional mm. Uh, housing ministry. Yes, sir. Yeah. N now, let me ask you a question, um, because you know, when you talk about having a cathedral of power, mm -hmm. this means that you're raising a people, you're training a people, your, your, entire, your entire message, your entire, everything that you do right. is about raising a people who have the power of God and know who they are and know what they're called to do. So then you say that you guys are now working on dealing with some things with transitional housing because mm -hmm. sometimes people lose their right. identity or they, they, they and, and, and sometimes people are in those situations because mm -hmm. they never had the power. They never knew who they were supposed to be right. and what they could really uh, harness in God. Right. Let me ask you another question. Now, you have been very instrumental in this, in the whole process of some things here, even in the state of Florida. Uh, tell us about the things that you're doing, not just in the church, but the things that you're doing uh, in the marketplace or in what some would call the seven mountains of yes. influence. Tell us what you're doing in those areas. Well, one of the areas that God has um, placed upon my heart, and I actually never thought I'd be involved in the area of politics, mm. uh, but it was prophesied on me 20 years ago that I would be a pastor and I would be involved in politics. And it wasn't until uh, a year ago uh, when the, or so ago when the Supreme Court brought down the uh, uh, same-sex marriage decision that I filed a petition uh, called the Pastors Protection Act to uh, protect the pastors, the clergy, the church, the entity of the church. <clears throat> and um, Within two weeks, we had 24,000 signatures. Wow. And I said, Lord, you know, I never thought it would go this quickly. And, and so I found myself nine months into um, the Capitol, 
um, fighting for this bill, and uh, it did get passed. It is now the law of the state of Florida, and so we're so excited because we're living in a season where uh, we're in the beginning stages of really a, uh, an attack on the church and as well as Christians, and so we've got to stand for our religious liberties, um, continue to preach the gospel in love, but not back off from what God has told us to say. You know, it's, it's very interesting. Um, I'm going to go back to the transitional house piece, but I will, before we go there, I really want to stay where we're at. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's an, it's an attack technically on the church, or do you think it's an attack on covenant? And so when we look at the, the real attack being mm -hmm. an attack on covenant, yes. what are your thoughts about that? Well, that's really what it is. It's really an attack on the covenant, um, which is the next book that I'm writing currently okay. uh, called Covenant Under Fire, oh, wow, what good. the enemy really wants. Mm -hmm. Because the covenant with America is, on, is in, uh, under fire. Mm -hmm. The covenant of marriage is under fire. The covenant of the family uh, the way God designed it is under fire. The covenant of authority is under fire. We have a lot of... Uh, pieces that are moving around right now. And so it is the covenant um, that is under fire right now in this nation. And so this is where the enemy, that's what the enemy really wants. He wants uh, to break that covenant. That's what he did with Adam and Eve in the garden. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't about the fruit. It was about destroying the covenant that they had with God. And he succeeded in doing that at first, which he thought but then God was so gracious, uh, the loving, kind God that we have was so gracious to establish a new covenant with us uh, through his son, Jesus Christ. Wow. You, you know, that's amazing because the Bible is a book of covenants. Yes. And so if we read the Bible in any other method other than understanding that it is a book of covenants, mm. like you said, you had um, God's covenant with Adam, and then yes. you have uh, the covenant that he had with Noah and with David, uh, the covenant even that he had with others, with even Abraham. So now we get into a place that, as you said, Jesus comes and restores that covenant, and now the enemy is still right. after that covenant. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important that, uh, that you know, and I'd love to be able to get a copy of that when you when you're finally uh, yes. finally finished with it because I really believe it's going to help the believer to understand mm -hmm. what covenant is all about right. and not only what covenant is but how to handle when their covenant with God is right. under fire. Yeah, because covenant is a contract. Mm -hmm. It's a an agreement, a promise, a stipulation. Yes. And so although God has covenants with us, there's also stipulations for us to stay in covenant. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we need um, as Americans and even as the church is to get back in covenant with God. You know, uh, this, I love the scripture that says, if my people mm -hmm. that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, he said, then I will heal their land. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have a problem with praying. I think we have a problem with turning mm. because a lot of people are praying in this hour. You know, we've had a lot of tragedies in this nation and people are praying and they're having prayer visuals. But the question is, other than the praying, are we turning mm -hmm. so that he can really hear what we're praying about? Wow. You know, uh, I mean, that in itself is amazing. Uh, just the whole thought process of, as you said, praying, seeking his face, mm -hmm. turning, and then him healing. And when I did a little bit of research on that, that word heal meant to restore. Right. So there's people out there who need to be restored. And I remember when, when Solomon prayed that prayer, first he posed the question to God. He said, if your people mm -hmm. are in this situation, that scenario, that scenario in this one, right. you, know, they're, 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 you know, they're cast out or, you, you know, the heavens are shut to them or things of this nature. And then all of a sudden he comes back and God says, hey, listen, after, after Solomon's sacrifice, he says, listen, he said, if my people who are called by my name. Mm -hmm. And so there is a, that, it means that there is a heartbeat of God for covenant. He mm -hmm. is really for the cup for covenant with his people. He is a, he is a God of covenant. He is a God that keeps his word. He's a God that loves yeah. his people. And there's and conditions to covenants because good, good. Talk to if, us about it. The word if is a word that is conditional. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to do something and then he's going to do something. If my people that are called would mm -hmm. do X, Y, Z, then I will. And so that's a part of covenant is that there are stipulations in covenant. You know, he's just not this God that says, well, you can do whatever you want and I'm just going to keep on doing, you know, the, my part of the agreement. The, you know, every covenant has stipulations on both sides. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I believe that we really need to teach the church in this hour more about covenant and keeping our covenant with him. Wow. Now, you know, some people, 
um, oftentimes when we as pastors make statements and we have a bold position mm -hmm. on some things, people don't necessarily understand what we went through that brought us to that place. Mm -hmm. But uh, you have a phenomenal book called uh, Lemons to Lemonade. Yes. And so this story chronicles your process of having been homeless and gone through other things. And then at some point, you begin to remember or you learned about the mm -hmm. covenant that you had with God and what your covenant privileges and, uh, and, and the things that were already written in your contract that were available to you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that Lemons to Lemonade and how that process right. and what made you so passionate about people understanding their covenant? Well, 22 years ago, um, I was married. I was a worship leader at a church, mm. um, and I had, we had two kids. And I found out some point in the process that my oldest son, who's named after me, was really not my son. Mm. Uh, he was junior, but he really was somebody else's son. And as you can imagine, that would be very devastating to anybody uh, to find out that your son who's named after you is really not your son. Um, in that moment, even through the hurt and pain, I decided to forgive my wife um, and continue worshiping, not even letting the family know what had really transpired, what was going on. And the only thing I could hear in the back of my mind is what my grandmother told me. She said, the Lord said, do not marry her. Mm. And I ignored the call, the, 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 the warning of my grandmother, and I got married anyway, only to find out that she was 100% right. Well, in the process of forgiving, I was worshiping, and uh, I was working even at uh, a hospital as an ambulance dispatcher from 11 at night to 7 in the morning. And one day I got off from work, and I found that my wife had left and ran off with another gentleman and left me with both of the kids. They were three and two years old at that time. I was 22. And I went into a deep depression, and I ended up homeless because I found that very quickly because I was a breadwinner and I would give her all the money that everything was behind three months. The, the, the apartment, the lights, the car note, everything was behind three months. And in six weeks, I began to lose everything week by week. They came and got the car. I lost my job because I was making a lot of mistakes on the job thinking about my situation at home, um, and I ended up homeless in the city of Claremont, sleeping behind Winn-Dixie, hmm. only to, uh, not knowing that God was going to call me to birth the church in the place of pain 10 years later. Hmm. And so I now pastor one mile from where I used to be homeless. Wow. And so I understood now why God had me go through that. I didn't understand why I was going through it. And so the book really is about people who've learned how to squeeze purpose out of a sour season. Mm. Because some of us have been cut, squeezed, shaken, and stirred for the purpose of other people. You know, you've gone through what you've gone through, not for you, but for what God has ordained and called you to. And so that's really what the book is about. And I talk about different people in the book and how their life, even though it was a sour situation at that moment, today they can realize the lemonade in their life because they had to be cut so that we could be refreshed. You know, it, it, it's good. I, I had to think about that for a second. So you said they had to be cut and squeezed and shaken. then shaken. Yes. And then what was the last one? Stirred. Stirred. My because, God. Because God showed me the process of what lemonade goes to real lemonade now. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about this 1% fruit juice that you buy at the store, you know, <laughs> that has a form of lemonade but denies all the power. Power thereof. All right. And so God showed me the process that what real lemonade goes to is kind of similar to the Christian. Right. We've got to be cut. Mm. First of all, you got to have real lemons. Okay. So your problems is really the main ingredient to your success. Mm. But you've got to be willing to be cut. You never get the uh, true brilliance of a diamond until it's been cut. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And so a lot of times, if you feel like you've been cut a lot, man, God's getting ready to use you. He's getting ready to let you shine before men. Then you got to be uh, squeezed. Sometimes God's got to squeeze things out of us. Mm -hmm. Doubt, negativity, the way we think, our mentalities. And we've got to be uh, shaken or well, stirred first because you've got to stir up the gift. The water represents God because when he gets in your situation, everything that's at the bottom of your life has to come to the top of your life now mm. because he said, I come that you might have life and that life more abundantly. Yes. The sugar represents uh, the word of God. The more you put in it, the better it becomes. Mm. But the last stage is really... Uh, the presentation, and that's when you have finished the process and you pour it in a glass, and that 
poured fresh glass of lemonade is designed to refresh the person that's getting ready to drink it. So that lemonade was cut, squeezed, shaken, and stirred, not for itself, but for the person who needed to be refreshed. Wow. Hey, you know what? That'll, that'll preach right there, man. That, that was powerful. <laughs> powerful analogy. I love the way that you use that. Um, when, I, when I think about this whole process, mm -hmm. I understand, and I heard you say something about that you were a worship leader. Yes. And so do you still find yourself, uh, some people that have gone through challenging, like when you were being cut and mm -hmm. then you were being, um, you, you know, shaken and you were mm -hmm. being stirred and then right. you were, you know, all the processes of things, mm -hmm. did you find that it produced in you uh, a worshiper? And then I think yeah. you've, you've, just, uh, you've just released this CD, yes. Mighty and Great. Yes. So, so did that produce in you, produce? the worshiping because because the reality is when, yeah. we, when we're in God when we go through challenges it mm -hmm. should push us closer and cause us to draw nearer to him well my greatest songs came out of my greatest pain mm -hmm. wow um, I tell wrote, us about I this wrote one. a lot of songs during that season in my life because I had no electricity I had no phone I had any, no no television in, in the house and so all mm -hmm. I could do is just worship through the pain wow. you know dr. Marvin Sapp one of the greatest recording artists in our country a lot of his number one hit songs that have blessed us, You Saw the Best of Me, mm -hmm. you know, Never Would Have Made It. Yes. All those songs were birthed doing Dr. Sapp's tragedies in his life. Yes. His wife died of cancer, his father died, his father in the law, Lord died. And so all these mm -hmm. songs were birthed during those seasons. But the song wasn't about Marvin's season, it was about the season that we were going to go through because we needed to hear never would have made it. Wow. And so the greatest songs that God ever gave me was birth in my pain. And so Mighty and Great, uh, I didn't write that song, but someone wrote it for me. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that song, I said, this is, this, is, this is the song because it's talking about how mighty and how great God is. No matter what you're going through, he's still going to be mighty. He's still going to be great at the end of the day because he never changes. Well, you, you know, you, you probably just really blessed somebody today. You because there is somebody that is watching us today who is going through things in life and they're being cut or they're being, right. um, you know, they're going through some other process in life that they literally think, I'm not going to make it out of this. Mm. I'm helpless. I'm hopeless. I don't have the strength left in me to be able to endure this process. But what you just told somebody gave them hope. In a few minutes, we're going to take a moment and we're going we're gonna to let you speak into their life and we're going to let you pray. But, but I want you to, I want you to, you, know, you, you were talking about you and your wife pastor together. Yes. Now, does she minister as well at your church? She's a pastor for speaker. Um, right. God is blessed in the air of the prophetic and um, she's been doing a lot of great work with women's ministry and mm. she's birthed a women's ministry called Women by Design. You are fearfully and wonderfully made and so um, I, thank, I thank God for my wife because she was, really became the lemonade in my life that I needed mm. um, to do what I'm doing today. So, yeah. You know, it's, it's very interesting you say that. Uh, I was just in Nashville and um, I was able to pass by a place mm -hmm. where it was a, there was a, a payphone there mm -hmm. when I was homeless as well in Nashville. I just got out of the military. And so in the process of that, it brought back those memories. So as you were talking, your talking even encouraged me to know and encouraged some people that are watching out there to know that if God did it for us, that right. he'll do it for them. Mm -hmm. And because sometimes people see us and they see us, we're on television, here we are, we're sitting on TV in, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes people think you haven't gone through anything, right. but you've gone through some stuff literally that some people didn't make it out of, mm -hmm. and you did it with the power of God. And God allows you to go through things because he has a specific time that he's going to use you uh, when, when he, you know, that time that God has for you, he's going to use you. And so never, uh, people should never uh, uh, complain about, oh, why am I going through this? Because there's always a reason why God has you going through something. He has an ultimate plan. Jeremiah says, you know, I, the, you know, I have a plans for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and heal you. And so I even know now today that, uh, that I've, even though when I was working with the Pastors Protection Act and getting involved in the politics, not knowing that there were other doors that were going to open internationally as well as um, the season that we're in in this country uh, when we're dealing with, um, you know, the, the things that are going on in this country. And so you never know what God has planned for you until you just allow him to uh, show you. Mm -hmm. Can you do something for me? Uh, mm -hmm. Will you talk about very quickly, and then after that I want you to pray. Mm -hmm. I, I really felt that there is, there's power in our process. Mm -hmm. And so somebody that's in the process right now that really, again, wants to give up, 
and they may not have the book mm -hmm. about the lemonade. Can right. you speak to them very quickly and yeah. then pray for them Absolutely. so that they have the, the, the strength to be able to continue to endure right. in their process? Because sometimes their right. process is making them into something that they're going to be and it's necessary. They just don't know it. And it right. doesn't feel good and doesn't look good. Right. Will you talk to well, that? Well, if you're out there and you are experiencing, uh, you're in that process season, you're, you're in that season that I talk about where you're being cut, squeezed, shaken, and stirred. You know, if you're holding on, you got to remember why you held on so long in the first place, someone once said. And you got to keep trusting God because God always has a plan. He said he would never leave us nor forsake us. God is not going to leave you by the side of the road. He has not forgotten you. He has not forsaken you. The only thing that you need to do in this season is keep on trusting God. I was reminded that Jairus, when he went to Jesus and they came and said, don't bother the teacher. Your daughter's already dead. Even in a dead situation, mm -hmm. Jesus looked at Jairus and said, keep on believing. And that's what I want to tell you today is to keep Keep on believing no matter how bad it looks. Wow. Well, will you do something for me? Will you pray for them? Will you, will you, will you pray for them that, that again, those who, who need, um, who just need to be encouraged, who need to be strengthened? That was a powerful word. I'm telling you that, that blessed, I'm telling you, I know that it blessed some people that are watching us, but, but I want you to take a moment and just pray for them so that they, so that they can get that impartation of prayer that's on your life from what you had to go through. Amen. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you right now for those that are watching by television. We pray for that mother, that son, that father, that family that may be going through the most difficult season in their life. I'm reminded, God, that you told Jairus to keep on believing. I pray, God, as they trust you, as they continue to lean on your, your, your hands and lean on your ability to bring them out, that, God, they will keep on keeping on. They will keep having faith and trust in a God that never leaves us nor forsake us. God, give them the strength to walk in uh, the authority and the purpose that you have ordained for their life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, before, last thing before we close, can you tell them where they can go to find this book? Because I'm telling you, after that testimony and after that prayer, some people want to come and get this book. Will you tell them where they can get your CD and your book? Well, they can go to Amazon.com um, for the book. They can go to iTunes. Um, they can also go to my website, ChriselleWalker.com, and uh, you can find that information right there. Wow. Well, listen, thank you, Pastor Chris, for being here. Thank you for watching today. You guys were phenomenal, and we appreciate it. We realize you could have been watching any station, but you chose to watch us, and so we thank you so much for being with us today. We pray that something that was said or done today has blessed you, and we declare it's going to revolutionize your life for the rest of your life. Thank you. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.